Today's your lucky day. You've just been called to help run a Milwaukee Coast train down from Bellingham to Tacoma. So hop out of that pickup truck, climb on board, introduce yourself to the engineer, and let's get started. Welcome to part nine of operations on the HO Burlington Northern Railroad. I'm Burr Stewart, the layout owner, and I'll be your host for this north to south tour of the railroad, which will be a complete run of this southbound Milwaukee Coast train. You can see that we already turned on our headlight and we've gotten underway. I'll give you a cab view in the upper left hand corner there. This train is starting its run from the Bellingham staging yard and it's making its way down across the Samish River towards the Burlington Yard near Mount Vernon, Washington. We've gotten orders from the Burlington Northern Dispatcher to take the siding at Mount Vernon because there is a northbound international passenger train coming our way. Our trackage rights came into being as a condition of the 1970 merger which created the Burlington Northern Railroad. Our train today is a combination of Northwest Forest products and Southern Pacific merchandise traffic which was very common on the Milwaukee after the merger because the Southern Pacific could take the cars from the Milwaukee at Portland, Oregon. I'll show you that on a map in a second. Here's a map showing the railroad lines in Washington State and you can see the Burlington Northern Route which runs from Bellingham through Mount Vernon, Everett, Seattle, and Tacoma and on down to Portland. In the Burlington Northern merger, in order to maintain competition, the ICC gave the Milwaukee Road trackage rights from Portland all the way north to Bellingham. And this allowed the Southern Pacific to obtain more of the fare for carrying cars between California and the Pacific Northwest. Our train is making its way across an aisleway on the railroad, which has a lift bridge, which I'll demonstrate in a second. Those beads hanging down from the fascia are to make sure you duck your head if you're trying to enter or exit the layout room. Whoa, let's watch that again. This is the main entrance to the train room. I set this up with a clip so that the bridge can stay locked into the ceiling when it's in the upper position. It's easy to pull it down with a quick yank. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to our train. This bridge crossing the Samish River, just north of Burlington, Washington, is one of the scenic highlights of my entire layout. It was built by Paul Scholes for his books titled Building Scenery with Paul Scholes, and after he finished building it, and taking all the pictures, I asked him what he was going to do with the module. And he said, oh, I was just going to throw it away. So I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And I was able to take it from him and install it on my layout here. You can see that I still haven't added the water to complete the scene, but we'll get there eventually. Three locomotives might seem like a lot for such a short train, but during the 1970s, the Milwaukee had very little cash and 
was not maintaining its locomotives very well, so they tended to run more locomotives than needed just to have a spare or two in case one failed. An ideal situation for a modeler. I love the way the brightly lit cars reflect in the water. And it'll be fun to get the rest of the water in so it's an even more noticeable effect. Let's take one more pass at this bridge from a completely different angle. I guess this would be a helicopter ride over the Samus River. Our three engines for this trip are a GP30, a GP9, and a GP38-2. All Athern Genesis products. As you saw before, we're stopping here at the turnout to take the siding. We're now entering the Burlington Yard, which is one of my favorite places on the Prototype Railroad. The Prototype Burlington Yard has only got about five tracks in it, which is perfect for modeling. And I was able to put it on a shelf here on the second deck of my layout. The reason the Burlington Yard's so interesting is that it was the terminus for two branch lines. One went west towards Anacortes, and the other one went east up into the mountains towards the town of Concrete. Now we shift to a northerly view, and you can see the Anacortes branch with the tank cars on the left of the main line. And of course we're in the siding, going past some cars that are ready to service either the concrete branch or the anacortis branch. Those empty ore cars there are servicing the fictitious limestone quarry that I've located at the south end of the yard. We run a rock train that takes limestone from this mine down to a cement plant in Seattle, and we'll do a video on that someday. There were three interchange points between the Milwaukee and the BN, on my part of the railroad at least. Uh, Bellingham in the north, Everett in the middle, and Seattle's Argo Yard in the south. And of course the trains went on to Milwaukee's main point in Tacoma, where they handled the cross-country trains from Milwaukee. So the only two places we can do work on this train are the Everett Yard and the Argo Yard. Once we come to a stop in the siding, we can wait for the oncoming international passenger train to come across the bridge towards us. While we're waiting, let's take a look at the car cards in our train and see if there's anything that we need to understand. We remove the engine cards and then we look at our car cards. The first four cars are light blue, meaning that they need to be eventually taken to the Burlington Yard that we're in now, and the rest are either green for Everett and white or unlabeled for Seattle or Tacoma. If there was an interchange between the Milwaukee and the BN in Burlington, we could drop those first four cars there, but there isn't. So we're going to haul the entire train down to Everett, and then we'll drop those four cars off in Everett, pick up any cars from the Burlington Northern in interchange there, and then head on south. Oh look, here comes the passenger train. Yeah. 
Normally this train would stop there at the Mount Vernon station, but this video is going to be long enough as it is, so we're just having the passenger train blow right by. It's only about a four hour trip from Seattle to Vancouver, BC. So this train tended to just be a baggage car and a few coaches. All right, now let's get back underway and see if we can make it down to Everett before we have more traffic. Just in front of the locomotive, you can see the limestone cars ready to be picked up by the rock train. As you can see, our first scenic point is the bridge over the Skagit River between Burlington and Mount Vernon. These two spans were built by Lee Twaits, and he sold it to me at a swap meet years ago when he was converting from HO to O scale. The uh, prototype crossing of the Skagit River, I believe, has four spans. These two spans here at least give you the idea. Passing by the Mount Vernon station, still unpainted. You notice how slow we're going. The Milwaukee Road was highly undercapitalized by the 1970s, so their equipment tended to fail, and the Burlington Northern regarded these trackage right moves as fairly potentially dangerous to their right of way. So they restricted the Milwaukee trackage right trains to 25 miles per hour. This was very annoying to the Burlington Northern crews because when they got behind one of these trains they would have to reduce from their normal hotshot speeds uh, which was a holdover from the days of the Great Northern way, whose uh, locomotive engineers were known for being fast runners. Now you can see we're crossing a second bridge, which is over the Stillaguamish River. I built this bridge from a stock Walther's kit and spray painted it silver. You can see we're so close to the deck below us that I didn't have room for any scenery under the bridge. But I think this arrangement of bridging the gap between two benchwork sections works pretty well. Now we're heading around an unscenic curve and passing Cruz Junction, which is where the line branched off towards Arlington and Darrington. We run a local train called the Darrington Logger, which went from Everett to Darrington and back. And someday we'll do a video about that move. You get a nice glimpse of two model scenery techniques here. On the left is blue foam carved and painted with latex paint. And on the right, you see some plaster cast rocks stained with acrylic washes. 
In my opinion, the plaster rocks look a lot more realistic, but on the other hand, it takes a lot less time and mess to make the carved foam rocks. Well, now we're crossing a third river, the Snohomish River, and moving through the Delta Y, entering a fictitious tunnel which takes us around the corner to Everett's Bayside Yard. The prototype bridge was a swing bridge and it had a little guard shack with a train register, so trains had to stop here and register their passage through this dark territory. We've received orders from the dispatcher that we're to take the siding at Everett because we're about to be passed by the southbound GWS train. Their crew can hardly wait because they want to get back up to their normal speed. We have to stop here in the tunnel so we can have the brakeman flip that switch to let us get into the siding. Ooh, that must have been hard on the ears to hear that horn inside the tunnel. That mountain in the upper right hand corner was painted on the backdrop by my son Robin and it represents Glacier Peak, which is one of the most prominent volcanic peaks in the area of Everett in the Cascade Mountains. On the front track there, you can see a freshly painted Union Pacific combination door boxcar that just arrived on the layout. Uh, it's a beautiful new product from Tangent. If I wasn't so busy shooting and editing videos, I would have weathered it by now. It's a really good looking car. You might have noticed another version of it painted in Milwaukee paint uh, in our train. All right, now we're pulling into the siding and spooling down and we have to wait some more for that oncoming Vancouver, British Columbia to San Francisco GWS train. GWS stands for Great Northern, Western Pacific, and Santa Fe. And this was a famous through train that ran all the way from Vancouver, British Columbia, down to the Bay Area. And when the BN merger happened, I think they renamed the train, but uh, we still call it the GWS, and of course the northbound version is the SWG. They may have their bell on, but they're not really slowing down for anybody. I think normally they would have stopped here for some pickups and drop-offs, but uh, we're trying to keep this video reasonable length, so we're just going to let them blow right through town. You can see I'm enjoying this immensely. At this rate, they should be in Seattle in no time.
Well, that was fun. Now let's get back to work. We've got to do an interchange here between the Milwaukee and the BN. The schematic color-coded drawing with the black dot showing our current location suggests that we should interchange any cars here with green or blue colors and pick up orange-colored waybills for the Milwaukee. And then we'll proceed southbound to the zones with the red, orange, and yellow colors. We'll drop those off at Argo Yard in South Seattle. If we consult the track three there, it looks like there are two cars to pick up a box and an empty wood chip car from the Scott paper mill. And if we look in our train, we remember that we had those four blue cars that were supposed to go to Burlington, which can be dropped off here and go up on the Burlington local back to where they belong. So we'll go ahead and uh, put the car cards in our train the way it's going to end up and put the dropped off car cards in the appropriate box. Uh, we counted off those first four cars and now we'll pull them out and put them in track two. The numbering convention for tracks on the BN is to number the tracks sequentially moving out from the main line. So the cars we're pulling right now are on the siding, which would be called track one. Next to them is an empty track, which we'll drop those cars at, called track two. And then the two cars we're picking up next to the ice house there are on track three. You might have noticed that blue roll of painter's tape above the tunnel in the far distance. Uh, my friend Dave Enger, who's been helping with the switching on this video, he just couldn't resist getting back to work and on some rock work that he's doing on the other side. So you'll see his uh, hand reach in once in a while for tools. Very unprototypical, but highly efficient and beneficial. I placed that man standing in front of the locomotive as a pilot uh, who might be representing the Burlington Northern uh, while the Milwaukee ran across its main line. I don't know if the Milwaukee used pilots, but it's just a guess. At least I'm modeling the summer of 1973, so that guy shouldn't be freezing to death out there. That freight house over on the right is an old fine scale miniatures kit that one of my high school buddies built. And it's a stand in for the Everett Freight House. It normally has 40 foot boxcars parked in front of it, but due to COVID, I haven't had operating sessions for a while, so it seems to be bare. Everett really is an interesting town to model. And the prototype town was served by the Northern Pacific, the Great Northern, and the Milwaukee Road. And they had a reciprocal switching arrangement where four months of the year the Milwaukee switched the town, four months for the NP, and four months for the GN. After the merger, it changed to four months for the Milwaukee and eight months for the new Burlington Northern. In theory, this means that every third operating session, I should have Everett switched by a Milwaukee switcher. Well, it looks like we have our train put back together now. Next stop will be Argo Yard in South Seattle.
I have my locomotives set up with working brakes, so you heard me spool up the engines first and then release the brakes. Great fun. There's the box car and chip car that we picked up in Everett. And we no longer have those log flats. And there's the other version of that tangent combination door box car that I mentioned. This section of main line we're on is called the low line, which went from Bayside Yard to Everett Junction. And above it you can see tracks of the Weyerhaeuser Mill and the Delta Yard, which were reached from the High Line. Both of these yards were in Everett proper, so it gets a little confusing to make sure people know the difference between the Bayside Yard on one side of the peninsula and the Delta Yard on the other side. This train is a good length for this layout. It really feels like it's going someplace. I'm sorry it's not in better focus. I'm taking these videos with iPhones and when they're in a tripod it's hard to get them to focus on the subject. Now we're curving around towards Everett Junction and then the town of Muckleteo. You can see on the fascia there I just installed a telephone system so that the yardmaster here in Delta can call the yardmaster in Bayside without having to walk around the congested room to the other side of the peninsula. You can see from all the stone embankments that were running along the shores of Puget Sound in this area. That tunnel with the locomotive peeking out is my representation of the hill that climbs a 5% grade up the, to the Boeing aircraft manufacturing plant in Muckleteo at Payne Field. The local crews call that train the jet job, and uh, one day we'll do a video about that. It carries some really interesting specialized aircraft parts cars and it runs up the 5% grade caboose first for the safety of having the engines and their braking systems at the bottom of the train. Now we're passing through Ballard and approaching Bridge 4, which is the crossing of Salmon Bay and the Lake Washington Ship Canal on the way to Inner Bay Yard in Seattle. I have no idea what that maintenance of way coach is doing on the branch line to Fremont. I don't even think it's on the track, but I didn't notice it when I was filming this shot. So there it is. You can also see a couple of slag cars on the lower deck uh, where we will have a model of the Bethlehem Steel Mill in West Seattle when we get around to building it.
Now we're coming under Nickerson Street overpass and entering Inner Bay Yard. That's the time oil loading racks in the background. And the Interbay engine terminal. The Southern Pacific diesels there may be used for one of the southbound pool trains that will head to Portland. In the lower right is the car repair facility in Inner Bay. You might recognize this yard from some of my earlier operations videos. Now our train's passing underneath the Dreva Street overpass and we'll soon enter the tunnel underneath downtown Seattle. If you want to see more about how this yard works and operate in the classification bowl, check out my part one video in this series. There's the GWS train that passed us earlier. It doesn't seem to have gotten its work done in Interbay yet. But the crew is happy. They got to go home. Now we're crossing Broad Street and the Space Needle in downtown Seattle. Vine Street and Wall Street. One of these days I need to install flashers and bells ringing when you cross these streets. But the purpose of this video is not to make a do list for me, it's to have you enjoy what's already built. Now we're passing the King Street Station. Stacy Street Yard Complex. It looks like there's a Burlington Northern switcher doing some work in the yard. We don't have to pay attention to that because we're not stopping until we get to Argo Yard, which is the next yard south of here. That GN Alco S2 switch engine wasn't really on the roster by 1973, but I like the way it sounds so much that I sometimes pull it out. Now we're approaching the Royal Brougham grade crossing next to the King Dome and we're entering the Argo Yard Complex. 
On the right is the Milwaukee and UP transfer yards. And we'll be stopping to drop off and pick up a few cars from our train before we head south to Tacoma, which was where the Milwaukee Road's main yard was for the coast route. This yard was used by both the Union Pacific and the Milwaukee for interchanging with the Burlington Northern. So we also operate a job that consists of uh, bringing Union Pacific cars in from staging and interchanging them with the BN switcher at Stacy. A much shorter job than this one today. We're going to slow the train down here so we can examine the car cards and waybills and see what cars we get to drop off and pick up here at Argo Yard. It looks like we have five cars to pick up. And from our train, it looks like we can drop off the first five cars. We keep the ones on the right. Those cars on the left, we drop off. The inset shot on the lower right is an experiment I'm doing with my Osmo Mobile 3 uh, gimbal unit to see how well it can track the locomotives as they move around during the switching operation. So you'll see a couple of irregularities in the footage, but overall I think it's done pretty well. I'm not sure why the engineer slowed down the train here to a stop. I think he was just checking the radio and making sure that it was okay for us to occupy the main line. There's that new combination door boxcar again. Nice. There isn't room in the yard for us to park one of the cuts uh, in there while we pull the other one out. So we'll have to use these first five cars that we're setting out as a lead to pull the cars we're picking up, set them on our train, and then go back a second time and drop the set outs. We've got our train parked on the main line here, but fortunately there's no oncoming traffic anytime soon, so the dispatcher has allowed us to go ahead and complete this set out. Throw the switches and we can back in and pick up our pickups. I guess that's why they call them pickups. Yeah, it took me a little bit of work to get the uh, 
Osmo trained on the Milwaukee gondola there, but it's working now. That steel bridge above the yard is the Stillaguamish River crossing that we passed earlier in our run. This area is the southernmost extent of my mainline track, so our engines are now pulling this long cut of cars basically into the throat of the Tacoma staging yard. As soon as we get our train put back together, it will head south into the staging yard and be finished. Now we have the switches lined for the main, and we can push our pickups onto the train. Bang! Now for our final switching move of the day. We can set out the set outs. These setouts are destined for interchange with the Burlington Northern. So at the end of the day, the Milwaukee switcher will take these cars over to the Stacy Street yard that we passed earlier and drop them off so that the Burlington Northern switcher can make them into the proper cuts of cars that, that will get them delivered to their ultimate uh, destination, your ultimate shipper, usually a local industry. You thought that gondola was going to hit that boxcar, didn't you? So did I. There we go. Well, it looks like we've left Argo Yard just as we found it, clogged full of cars. 
Only we picked up the ones we needed and left them with the ones they needed. Railroad operations at its finest. I found out on this trip that the GP38-2, that was the third unit in this consist, uh, had a snowplow on it which was interfering with the KD coupler. So I had a little trouble with coupling up to the cars uh, several times. When I couple up this last final time, you'll see me give it a little test to see if it hitches upright. After we're done, I'll take it to the shop and put a longer shank coupler on it. So, all of our work completed, we're headed off to Tacoma. Normally, uh, we would have paused a little for an air brake test and gotten a dispatcher's clearance for which staging track to occupy and all that good stuff, but uh, this video has gone on long enough. So. We're just going to charge off. One last thing we do need to do though is check our car cards and see that our train is together and will make sense for the next operator. As we leaf through our cars, we see that we have the orange Milwaukee transfer cars, a number of blank cars which are to be returned to Tacoma, and our last car is another Milwaukee transfer. So it looks like we did a great job of running down the entire length of the railroad, picking up everything that was destined for the Milwaukee road, and now we're heading off into staging. I hope you enjoyed this video the ninth in my series of operations videos and if you liked it be sure to subscribe to my channel and watch the others in the series. For now this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains.